This is your Tech News Briefing for Friday, September 16th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Apple released its latest operating system, iOS 16, this week. If you've got an iPhone, eventually you'll have to update to the new system. But some users may prefer to wait to see if any kinks need to be worked out. So what can you expect once you do update to the new OS? And how will it compare to other smartphones? Joining us to discuss that is The Wall Street Journal's senior personal tech columnist, Joanna Stern. Hey, Joanna. Thanks for coming back on the show. Hey, Zoe. So, Joanna, let's start with some things iOS 16 has that make it feel like an upgrade. What were your favorite new features of iOS 16? Personally, I now cannot live without some of the messaging features. One of those includes the ability to edit a message. So if somebody else is running iOS 16, and let's say you have a typo, you can go and edit that message for up to 15 minutes. Another feature in messages that I really rely on now is the ability to mark as unread. Basically, text messaging has become the new email. We get so many messages, and this lets you just mark this as important. You can come back to it. It's a nice signal that, hey, this is something I want to look at later. I definitely understand that. I feel like there are so many text messages coming in from so many places these days. Uh, That seems like a nice to have feature, though. Visually, are there big changes iPhone users will notice in the updated operating system? So in the iPhone's 15-year history, there's never been a bigger design change to the lock screen. That's the screen that we look at every day, all day. And so now Apple lets you customize that in millions of ways. That's not an exaggeration. There are so many color options for the fonts. There are going to be so many different widgets. And of course, whatever wallpaper you'd like. One of my favorite things here too is that Apple has these new preloaded wallpapers. One of them is a weather background and it automatically changes based on the conditions in your area. Another is emojis. So you can put in your favorite emojis and it will do different patterns on the background of the screen. Obviously, I have a poop emoji background now. All (laughs) of these things, and again, I'm not kidding, you could spend hours, if not days, customizing your lock screen now and you can make different options. I don't suggest you do that, but it is really nice to have a customized lock screen that's more yours or personalized. So Apple has released its new operating system, but while I've got you here, I want to ask about its new iPhones too. Could you tell us a bit about the different models that are coming out this year and if they're worth the upgrade? Look, every year Apple releases a slew of new iPhones, right? This year we got the 14, the 14 Plus, and those are the regulars, as I call them, more affordable. And then you have the Pros, the iPhone 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max. Usually, I say that all of those are good choices, and some people will be better with the lower-end models, some people will be better with the higher-end models. This year, my advice is a little bit different. In fact, those 14 models really haven't gotten that much better from the 13, just in terms of cameras and battery life. It's not that big of a jump. But the pros now offer more features where that value of going up $200 gets you some more features that I think people will really enjoy. And those features used to be really centered around the camera, right? Going from the regulars to the pros, you got a third camera, the telephoto camera. Now you get more than that. You get some real screen enhancements. One of those is an always on screen. It means the screen always shows your time and the date. You don't have to tap on it. It just always shows it. But then there's this other feature. It's kind of a screen technology turned software trick. It's called the Dynamic Island. I'm not joking. That's the real name of the feature. And in fact, I went and tested this on a real island because I kind of needed to poke fun at this name. (laughs) But what this lets you do is multitask. And it is this island is at the top of the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max screen. And it is a little pill area. It's the shape of a pill, which is what was previously the notch area. And so Apple shrunk that down. That's the area that has the selfie camera. It's the area that has the face ID. And so now this area expands and retracts. That's the word dynamic. And different software apps or different apps can then live in the island so you can jump between things and it can display information like if you're on a phone call, it can display the amount of time that's on the phone call or you can tap on it to get to the phone call screen. 
If you're listening to a podcast like this one, you can press and hold on the dynamic island to pause it, maybe. Sorry, I could talk for a really long time about the dynamic island. I'm very dynamic when I talk about it. And maybe very on an island right now. Or have you left the island? I left my island. I'm in my office attic, which is not dynamic. You know, cameras and videos are often the selling point for new phones. Are there changes here that you liked? Apple, over the last couple of years, has put in new video tricks. And this year, the video trick is action mode, which means if you're doing some action, the phone should stabilize the video. And so to test this, I did a couple of things. One, I went out to that island, so I canoed there and tried that. You know, the footage wasn't that much more stable, but I definitely found myself running around a lot to test this. And you can see the difference. I wouldn't say that it's major. Already the video on iPhones, starting with probably the 12, has been really stable. But if you get these phones, you're probably going to want to run around and do some action. Okay, so how do all of these changes compare to non-iPhone or non-Apple software? In both iOS 16 and the iPhone 14 models, Apple plays catch up to Android. This happens every year. Some features Android gets from iOS, iOS gets from Android. Specifically though, in iOS 16, the ability to customize the lock screen in this way feels very Android. Android has had a similar sort of feature with their material design and they introduced that about a year or two ago. Also on the iPhone 14s, again, talking about that lock screen on the 14 Pros, that always on display has been on Android phones for years now. All right, that's our senior personal tech columnist, Joanna Stern. Thanks for breaking this down for us, Joanna. Anytime. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. For more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.